1980s cordless power tool. I know what you're thinking. Weak. The battery's always dead. Doesn't want to charge. Well, today we're going to fix it. We're going to take this rare 1980s quarter inch power ratchet made by Black & Decker that runs off NICAD technology and we're going to upgrade it to lithium so we can get we can make it a usable tool again. Keep watching. So you might recognize this. This is the Black & Decker power screwdriver that was on every single man's garage or kitchen wall just hanging there ready to ready to go into action if you needed to put a screw in somewhere but this right here was sold in conjunction pretty rare not as common as definitely not as common as this this was sold about 1988 uh it was also relabeled and put a red handle on under snap-on so snap-on tools also sold the same thing to mechanics all over the country that could afford it. it was probably three times the price with the red handle than it was with the black handle and black and decker logo but we're going to bring this into the 21st century even though we're a quarter of the way through now and put lithium batteries in here so we can actually use it so the head does pivot on there here you can pivot it in any direction if you want your i guess if you want your thumb trigger trigger either on your index finger or on the side to reach different areas uh, but we'll just pop this apart real fast and go through it. Come on. Oh, there we go. We've got all of our gear reductions. So you got your sun gears. Um, this is directly to the motor. Actually, not that many gear reductions. Drills these days will have double stacks of these. And then this should just come in half. And there are three cells. So these are four fifth sub C NICAD or it could be nickel metal hydride cells. But we'll take these out. Made in Japan. It goes to show, I mean, they still hold a charge actually. But each one of these is fully charged. So each one of these is just like a AAA battery in the same voltage, 1.5 volts roughly. But they're rechargeable, so they're not quite that. They're 1.2 volts nominal, so that's average. So they're 1.4 volts full and one volt empty. So 1.2 volts nominal. That's where you get 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 3.6 .2, volts. What's this? This is rated for, and it just so happens that a lithium cell is rated, what this one cell is rated for the same as three of these, almost identically. These are rated for 3.6 volts nominal, which is about 4.2 volts full and three volts empty, which is the exact same thing as, as this. Okay, we got a couple options to repower them with lithium cells. This one right here, I, if I recall, I jammed two 18650 lithium cells, high drain for power tools, etc. These aren't just laptop batteries. They actually have to be able to deliver a higher amps. Like these same cells are in laptop batteries, but they can only put out one or two amps. This one right here puts out, I think, 35 or 30 amps. Uh, this one right here puts out 35. So this is a um, this is a 2700, but they also have a 21700, so 21 millimeter, just a little bit fatter than this. Should be able to fit one of these in here, or two of these, and so that's kind of the trade-off. Each one of these is going to be roughly, they're tested out to about 2300 milliamp. So I'm going to get 4600 milliamp hours versus or this one i can get roughly three thousand so five thousand or three thousand versus these that only had about eight eight hundred maybe seven hundred so you got you know let's say let's say even a thousand but they're not going to be a thousand but you got a thousand milliamps this is going to the tool is going to run five times longer with these two cells or about three times longer with this one cell so either way we have to modify the case in one way and that is with the, uh, the the screw that mounts and holds this half together we need to remove that there's a little nub in there we need to remove that out i had to do it on this one as well so i got the two cells squished in there um one here one here boom okay the wiring not complicated at all this was the original positive that went to the tool. This was the original negative that went to the tool. It actually wouldn't matter if you switched them, the motor wouldn't care, but. So all we have to do is connect this side to the positive terminal, which is the button side of the battery. So just connect it to this, and this one down to the negative. 
That's it. Okay, we're going to prep the cells. Yes, I know. You can't solder on cells, but we are going to solder on cells. And we're going to solder regular wire. And I'm using acid flux. If you have any issues with getting, because um, it's steel. If you have any issues getting solder to stick, it's because you need good flux. If you use acid flux, done. Everywhere says, no, you're going to overheat it. Nope. Now, acid flux will cause corrosion. So after you're done doing it, you just wipe it off. You clean it off. You can use some rubbing alcohol or something, but boom. No corrosion. It's a connection. It's not electronic in there. Okay, I'm going to take some wire. I'm going to take some 18-gauge wire. Um, I could solder some tabs on, but we're just going to do this. And So let's tin the wire now. So that's tinned. Let's tin this. Yes, you'll damage the cells if you sit there for 20 seconds with this sitting on there. But just a couple seconds. Right now, no heat's even going to the battery. It's all going to the wire. There we go. Done. This one. And these cells are virtually the same voltage. They're both fully charged. Um, you don't want to do it when one cell's like way low and one's high. You do have to have the surface of the cell sanded or scuffed. I sand it. Um, you can't just, if you just try to put it on without doing that, it won't really stick. I'm just going to use spade terminals. These were the quarter inch wide standard ones. And these are super small. So I just cut them down. So we'll just crimp that on there. And then we can just slide it into the existing terminals without adjusting anything. Okay, really quick. Let's get this, scoop this out of the way. Charging. How do you go about charging these things? You cannot use the original NICAD charger for lithium. You just can't do it. It won't work. You have to put in a new charger. I think I want to utilize just plugging it in like your cell phone. Just take a USB-C, plug it into the bottom, charges up. When it's done, you just move it on. Don't have to hang it up anywhere. You just plug it in with a cable, just like a cell phone. So there's two options with that. One, well, three options. One, you can do what I did here, and there's a whole video on that. Two, I bought these little chips. They were super cheap. I think they were two bucks a piece or something like that. I bought five of them for, it was under 10 bucks. Um, and essentially, this just plugs into, just same thing your cell phone does. You can see I have it wired up right here. Um, for charging this because this would be exactly the same thing that's in there just positive positive negative negative there's really nothing to it and i put a cell in here it'll turn red and when it's charged it'll turn blue that's it unplug it does nothing it just sits there and so we can just take this little chip wire it just in the bottom just so we have the port plugging sticking out just far enough where we can plug this in and out and charge the batteries when we need to and still run the tool or if you want to be even more resourceful and cheap, you can actually utilize these vapes. So these are all discarded vapes and they have a cell in them. I have not tried to see if these cells are powerful enough to actually, you know, do what these could, but I bet you you could. If you piled up enough of these, if you piled up, if you paralleled four, three or four at least, you should be able to run this tool and they're small, compact. You just tuck them in there, but they always have a uh, charger built into them just you know a USB-C charger boom which I don't know what color it turns some of them get really fancy this one I think is I don't know I don't vape so I have no idea this one has a whole screen that tells you the charge and everything on it so you could utilize that if you really wanted to and put a charge indicator on it I guess I don't know it's how resourceful you want to be and then you'll notice each one of these have two wires going up. One, they go to this little charger board. We just snip off that extra wire going to the charger board on each side. And each one of those wires, just the positive and the negative, simply hook to the positive and the negative on my board. And it'll say in really small print, bat negative, bat positive. That's it, two wires. Two wires to hook this thing up and it'll be your charger. And two wires to hook up inside here to charge everything. Okay, I think I changed my mind of how where I want to put this little circuit board. Um, kept looking at the bottom, cutting a hole, but then mounting this. The problem is my batteries 
are right there, so I don't really have room. I can kind of put it off the side. But then how big a hole do I have to drill so you can actually still plug it in? And then you can't actually even see the LED charge indicators. Not a big deal. Plug it in. Don't worry about it. Maybe you could drill a little pinhole. But I thought, why don't I put it where this original LED was? Just took out those edges because it needs to kind of round over the slide up in here. There's even actually like a, a spot almost identical for it. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. I did leave the original wires um, that went to this board. You can see it goes up to this board and it goes to the motor. So these wires are actually connected to these right now. So I could actually utilize my other charger, but I also, so I want to do dual. So I can use it, utilize my other charger and utilize this little circuit board. Um, so now I'm just going to desolder these components on here. Um, they should just fall off, they're huge. Then we'll just take this and the positive comes right here, the negative is right there. I almost don't need to do anything. I'll put little these little jumper leads over to it. Just on the two little terminals. We should be good. Easy enough. Okay, there we go. I put the hole right there for the USB-C. There was, and I'm going to use the original charge indicator hole. Because you can look down in there and you can see it light up. Let's see. See, you can see it blue in there. That's when it's fully charged. It'll be red when it's charging. So you can just look through that hole and see. And it's, it doesn't protrude at all. Maybe I'll put just a dab of um, like hot glue just as a lens or something over that hole. But you can see. Tucks up in there nicely. Should be out of the way. Um, ideally, I would like it on the bottom, but it's not going to work with that circuit board. And ideally, I would not have joined the... Uh, the existing hole with the others but i had it all cleaned out and the last minute the little piece of plastic broke out of the middle so that's the way it goes okay i took a small piece of acrylic off just a big old acrylic sheet and whittled it into a little light diffuser so it's right where the original led was now if we plug it in see and that'll turn red when it's charging blue when it's not and it is just a piece take that whole thing out it's just that i bent it to go around the little usb c port and i'll just hot glue that in that's it here's the battery pack it is replaceable if i ever want to in 10 years or something you can just open it up replace this battery pack everything else should stay the same it would have been easier there would have been a little less trimming to fit a 2700 or even a 21700 in there um, but i want as much capacity as possible so um the motor goes in and then generally all this whole assembly went in with it, but I had to kind of hot glue most of it in there. This is a little control plate. We can snap that on. I'm going to come back because this is going to take me 10 minutes of fiddling with to get it back together. I'll get it though. There we go. Charging. Let's see. Lights up red because it's charging. It'll be blue when it's fully charged. I also left the contacts on here, positive and negative, so I could utilize my original the charger that's on the other one. And you can see it's green, so it should light up red when it's charging. I do. I got 4.16. Okay, so it's essentially fully charged. That's why this isn't changing, because that says it's, the battery is fully charged, essentially. And it's just a teeny bit. We'll run it down for a minute, I guess. Maybe I can, I can use it. Yeah, there we go. The battery's just so charged that it's charged. So that works as well. So there are pins 
all the way around. We're just going to try to catch a couple of them. This is going to be plenty to hold it. And if we ever want to, we can take off the top and just... That'll hold it. We can just take off the top and you can pull the, you know, spread it apart that way. Not the fastest thing in the world, but super lightweight and super quiet. I don't know if the volume is picking up how quiet this is. I mean, let's take like this right here. Let's take this one. Just whisper quiet. Beautiful. Yeah, that's okay. It's not super torquey, but enough. This has to be the smallest ratchet out there. I mean, the handle, the fattest part right here is about five and a quarter. I think the Milwaukee, which is I'd consider the other smallest one out there, is um, like six and a quarter, something like that, six and a half. These are actually pretty cheap. This one, like I said, you can get the exact same version in the Snap-on. They're rarer to find in the Snap-on, especially because they're probably just used and abused, and Snap-on guys never let their stuff go. But it just has a red body, and it says Snap-on. I think it says Snap-on Power Ratchet versus Black & Decker Power Ratchet, but it's just red exact same uh, i paid 20 dollars for this the snap one goes for probably double that on ebay 20 bucks shipped without a charger just exactly like this fantastic deal um go watch the video on doing this one uh this one i did a little bit of a different approach how i ran the charger and stuff kind of talked about it in the video but um either way works fantastic i like this idea a little bit better with the little USB C. I i think that'll last a long time if you want batteries you have to have high drain high discharge cells meant for power tools you can't just use any 18650 for like laptops and stuff like that um the best place to get used ones is out of like old dyson like dyson batteries these are almost every people throw these away all the time at battery recycling centers and stuff like that and they have awesome cells that are meant to run a power tool they're high discharge these are great cells there's enough you'll find a good ones you'll find a good ones in there to run something like this and do little projects around the house but thanks for watching guys have a good one take care